Welcome to Grable's Noon Hour Concert Series at Home for March 17th, 2021. My name is Karen Sunabaka, and I am an Associate Professor of Music at Conrad Grable University College. Conrad Grable University College is on the traditional territory of the Atawandaran, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee peoples. Grable is also on the Haldeman Tract, the land promised to the Six Nations that includes 10 kilometers on each side of the Grand River. I am a member of the Manitoba Métis Nation, and I'm still learning so much about my own bias and privilege. Before we get to our presentation today, I want to thank Stabler Insurance for their sponsorship support for our noon hour concerts. I'm pleased to present today's concert featuring the Andromeda Trio. The members of this trio are local musicians Marcus Schultz on violin, Miriam Stewart Craker on cello, and Heidi Fuster on piano. All three members of this trio are regular performers at our Noon Hour concert series, and both Heidi and Miriam performed fantastic solo concerts in our Fall 2020 Noon Hour concert series at home. The concert you will hear today was actually recorded before the COVID-19 pandemic, so you will see them in a concert hall and with an audience, something that we all remember and that we look forward to happening again. The piece you will see them perform is Brahms Trio No. 1 in B major. And now it's time to listen. Hi everyone, my name's Heidi Wall. I play the piano. I'm Miriam Stuart Craker and I play the cello. And I'm Marcus Schultes and I play the violin. And we're the Andromeda Trio. Today we're going to be performing for you a trio by Johannes Brahms the first trio in B major. So today's program, we uh, originally performed this program at the University of Western Ontario for one of my doctoral concerts. And the program included this piece, the Brahms, as well as Shostakovich too. So Marcus gets to talk about why we didn't pick Shostakovich too for you to listen to today. <laughs> So it, it, uh, I encourage all of you watching to look up Shostakovich's uh, second trio. Uh, it's, it's a really great piece. Um, Heidi, uh, Miriam coined it the best. It's a slow burn. So it, it starts really slowly and, you know, uh, you know, not much going on at the beginning. And it just b basically builds to this. The whole piece is a crescendo to the end. And so the, the end is very, very exciting and um, very dramatic. Uh, but I don't know. Um, we kind of felt it's it's funny when you know when we talk about repertoire, uh, you guys kind of pick and I just kind of go along with anything, <laughs> and then when we record stuff, I'm the pickiest one. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I don't know. So we we listened to you know the recording of both of them, and I don't know. I just felt that um, with the online for, um, forum, like when we're watching concerts online, uh, it's really hard. You kind of have to grab your audience at the beginning, and the Shostakovich it just takes so long to get into it that we didn't want to lose viewers. We wanted a piece that would immediately grab people. And the Brahms just starts in this gorgeous melody right away. And I don't know, I felt uh, that, would, that would be a better way online to go. Yeah. But, and like to the Brahms, possibly one of the most absolutely beautiful pieces of music ever written. I mean, who doesn't need a whole lot more beauty right now, right? Absolutely. I feel like the Shostakovich is a really great reminder for um, people who, you know, are in good times, how bad times can really be and <laughs> great how we need the opposite. So the Brahms is, um, I think, good for the soul for everybody right now. Mm -hmm. That Hence the title, Uplifting Brahms. It's a very uplifting, beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Yeah, and especially like right now, everybody's at home, and like music is just a way to transport yourself. And you know, when you're when you're feeling alone, well, for, at least for me, if I'm feeling alone, I just put put on a Mahler symphony or something, or I practice, and music just instantly lifts you up. Yeah. So. Yeah. The other thing about this uh, this recording, it was recorded pre-COVID, obviously. So there's an, a live audience. It's a live concert, which um, a lot of the online content now isn't online, like a live, uh, a live concert for an audience. So I think that that is something too that is 
is really exciting and special about this this particular yeah. recording. We're not wearing masks. We're not um, recording for you know a camera. Um, mm -hmm. It's us in concert, so I think that's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah and it, it's so funny doing doing like these online concerts for streaming because there's no you're you're playing for an empty hall, and you you don't have that interaction with the audience. You don't have that spontaneity. And I think there's there's definitely as performers there's something lacking in that energy, because yeah, yeah. your sound just goes to nothing, or to no one. Well, to no one. But yeah. Yeah, Miriam and I both did a concert for this series in the fall term, and um, I think I mentioned when I was talking with Karen for our interview for that concert that I did was uh, Mozart and Chopin. Um, like you have to when you're recording for a camera, you have to zen into this imaginary energy from the audience although i guess technically it's not imaginary because it happens when people are watching they're they there have, yeah they're totally yeah. there but you have to um it's it's a little different because when you're performing live you can hear people lean forward like you can hear their concentration which works on you while you're playing right so to kind of um i mean we all know that the that online audiences are doing that but you know it's really special for, i think everyone's just really looking forward to doing it together in the same room again soon so so hopefully this uplifting brahms is uh one more concert closer to that cool well so. then enjoy uplifting brahms thank you so much for being here and for being a part of this with us we really appreciate it yeah, and thanks everyone at University of Waterloo, Conrad Grable. Um, yeah, everyone we've had interactions with. Thanks for having us, and hopefully we'll be back again soon. Yeah, great. Enjoy. Bye. Stay tuned after the performance if you'd like to see more of our interview, which includes a little bit more about what we've been doing during the pandemic um, and what we have planned for next season.
it would be a good idea for us to tell you a little bit about ourselves. So Miriam gets to start. Okay. Um, well, we were going to just talk a little bit about what we've been doing uh, since the pandemic started, because obviously live concerts have come to a halt for now. Um, so I've been at home with my kids, my two young kids, um, looking after them a lot. And um, I also play with the Kitchener Waterloo Symphony, and we started um, we started up again in September. We record our concerts and then uh, stream them online virtually for all of you. Um, and that's basically what I've been up to. Marcus? <laughs> yeah, similar. Uh, all our all, all the concerts were canceled from March onwards. All the weddings and everything over the summer. Um, my wife is also a violinist, so. Yeah, we, we took the opportunity, actually, uh, we'd been talking about moving, so we actually moved from Toronto to Hamilton. So that kind of kept us busy over the summer. <laughs> uh, moving will do that. Um, and then I'm also the music director at Leaside Presbyterian Church in Toronto. And so that continued. We pivoted online. Um, so I basically became a video editor overnight, and every week I edit all the music together and upload them 
uh, for our Sunday service. So that, that has kept me busy. And Sharon and I are, are also the co-artistic directors of the Toronto Concert Orchestra. So shameless advertising, I know. Toronto <laughs> Concert Orchestra. Uh, and so we had an online summer season. We did six concerts over the summer, and which we organized and put all together. So with fantastic orchestra, fantastic board. So yeah, it was very successful, but it was also very busy. So I think with the, all the video editing and all the online stuff, uh, it's it's been actually more busy than normal times. So yeah, now concerts are kind of starting up again. Uh, I'm also associate concert master of Symphonia Toronto, and we started concerts that are streaming. So yeah, looking forward to yeah that vaccine coming out and hopefully getting back to normal very soon. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. So I've been um, in transition too to a different home. My husband Brent decided he wanted to become a farmer, so we're moving to Nova Scotia, and uh, so probably by the time you're all watching this concert, um, I'll be you know the proud owner of a dairy cow and uh, things and things like that and planting seedlings maybe. I actually don't know anything about gardening so that'll be fun. Um, anyway, so other than that, to, to taking care of Hazel and Rose and um, working a little bit on my thesis here and there which I hope to wrap up by June. That's the aim. And anything else? Not a lot of piano playing. I've kind of enjoyed a little bit of a break, but um, we have some trio plans for the 2021-22 season we want to talk about, just so you have something to look forward to after today. Um, do you, well, M Miriam, you wanna talk about the program? I'll talk about David's piece. Sure, so what we have planned, which we were going to do this season, but since um, everything has been postponed for now, um, we've decided to move all our programming to next season, 21-22 uh, season. So um, the pieces we have planned are... Brahms 3? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll edit it. <laughs> No, leave it in. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so clearly I did not start practicing this yet, but um, we will be preparing uh, the Brahms third uh, piano trio, the only one we haven't done yet. Um, do you know what key that's in? C minor. C minor, yeah. Um, it's the only minor key piano trio that he wrote as well. Um, epic piece. And then we are also doing the Debussy Piano Trio, uh, which isn't played very often. So I think that'll be really fun. Um, I'll talk about that. The, yeah. We picked that because um, it's really interesting combination with those two. Um, Debussy wrote that trio. It's his only trio. He wrote it really early on. I think he was 17 and it wasn't a complete composition. He um, never completed it and it was completed by I guess musicologists or composers sometime around like 1940. So it but technically it was written before Brahms wrote his third piano trio. So it's a really interesting little way to pair those two pieces. And then the third piece we're preparing for that season is a new uh, composition uh, that uh, David McAvoy, what? Commissioned work, right? Yeah, commissioned work uh, by David McAvoy, and he's writing that right now. Um, so he's a wonderful composer, so we'll see. We hope to share that with you. He's really excited to be writing for us because, you know, we're quite the trio, right? <laughs> <laughs> Heidi and I also, he was at Laurier with, with Heidi and I for a few, we overlapped for a few years anyway. Yeah. So... And he's an excellent pianist. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for being here and for being a part of this with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks everyone at University of Waterloo, Conrad Grable. Um, yeah, everyone we've had interactions with, thanks for having us. And hopefully we'll be back again soon. <laughs>